Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is underwritten by... Located on Lake Pontchartrain, Frisbee's Lakefront Restaurant and Bar offers traditional West End favorites, a scenic view, oysters, and numerous tasty options. More information is available at 504-304-4125 or brisbeesrestaurant.com. Mr. Ed's Oyster Bar and Fish House has been shocking here since 1979. Located at 3117 21st Street in Metairie, Mr. Ed's Oyster Bar and Fish House offers raw, fried, and grilled oysters as well as a range of Cajun and Creole dishes. Enjoy a dozen with a smile. Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is the first place award winner of the 2015 New Orleans Press Club's Excellence in Journalism Award for the category of Best TV Sports Show. Good evening, New Orleans, and welcome to the Mardi Gras edition of Inside New Orleans Sports. Happy Mardi Gras to all. Hope you're having a uh, great celebration. We're going to talk a little sports with you tonight here on Inside New Orleans Sports. Our guest tonight, great guest, uh, Lenny Van Gilder. Of course, he's been with us a lot here on the program from SportsNola.com. And uh, Ali Cosell from uh, The Bird Rights making his inaugural visit to the program. Tonight, we'll talk a lot about what's going on with the New Orleans Pelicans. We'll touch on the UNO Privateers. And if we got a couple seconds before the end of the show, maybe we'll slip the Saints in there as well. Let's get it started, as we always do. I'd like to find out what's going on with our guest. And we'll start with Lenny Van Gilder. Lenny, welcome. Sports NOLA is my go-to website when it comes to sports here in New Orleans. More people in New Orleans should realize, again, the great writers you guys have. Uh, you're one of the guys behind all that. Tell us a little bit about it. We've got a lot going on right now. Obviously, you mentioned uh, the, some of those topics you just mentioned. We're, we're on top of those as well as on the high school front, which is really our bread and butter. Uh, a lot of winter state championships going on on, on, the, uh, on the state level. Soccer this week, girls basketball next week, boys basketball in two weeks. So wall-to-wall uh, -wall from that perspective in terms, of, uh, in terms of championship coverage, you can find it all at sportsnola.com. Yeah, no doubt. And y'all do a great job as well. Um, also, throw in WHNO TV because that's, that's kind of your flagship as well. Absolutely. Uh, on, on, on the TV end, uh, we're about to get into baseball season, mm -hmm. and uh, we will have 10 games. We'll be announcing a schedule in the next few days uh, of our baseball schedule uh, on WHNO, and, of course, those games air live as well on SportsNola.com. If you want to know what's going on with the Pelicans, one of my go-to sites for a long, long time has been the Bird Rights. And uh, uh, Ali Cosell joins us on the program. Thanks for being with us. Tell us a little bit about that great site. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Eric. It's an exciting time. What a perfect way for me to have my inaugural debut. Uh, the Bird Rice has been around for about 10 years, and we just focus extremely and de dedicated to just nothing but the news, um, any kind of updates, all our opinions. We offer everything 24-7 after every game, uh, everything dedicated just to New Orleans Pelicans. And, and you guys do a great job with it. I, I, I love the fact that you know, all your writers have a different take in a lot of cases, kind of comes together on the site. You're very, very active in social media as well. I mean, you can really keep up what's going on, what's going on with, with uh, the salary cap, what's going on uh, with, you know, possible moves that the team could make. Uh, and if you would tell us, the, you know, the bird rights, where does that come from? Yeah, if, if you're not sure or have never heard of the term before, it's a play on words. Mm -hmm. The NBA free agency has mm -hmm. a lot of tiers of exceptions for free agents. And one of them, or a couple of them, I should say, exceptions are, in fact, the bird rights. So we just took a play on words, just changed really just a couple letters, and it became a perfect name. After the Hornets left, we needed a new name, so it fit. Yeah, it was per It really is good. And I would, I would ask everyone tonight, uh, go check it out. Uh, I'm telling you right now, you'll put it as one of your favorites. Uh, follow them on Twitter. And, uh, of course, you can see that uh, on our program tonight, uh, the, how to get to that as well. Well, the basketball climate in New Orleans just totally went from apathy to excitement. And um, you know, I've talked a lot about the casual NBA fan on both my radio and this TV show. Um, I really felt like this organization, the manager of this organization, had killed the casual NBA fan in New Orleans. They didn't care anymore. And you've got a core of, of, of NBA fans that will be there no matter what. They, want, they love the NBA. They're, they're going to they're come out and support the team. And then you had that casual NBA fan that would come out when the Pelicans are winning or when they had big names coming to town. 
they had pretty much gone into a slumber. They weren't worried about the Pelicans anymore uh, because, of the, again, the hopeless situation they were in. Uh, but those fans are now awake, as the, as the rest of new basketball fans uh, in New Orleans are. It started with the All-Star game. Uh, Lenny, I know you were around all that as well. I mean, just a home run for the city of New Orleans. Uh, to be able to get the game on short notice, to be able to turn around and put on the type of event that we put on, uh, second to none, it just goes to show you how world-class we are when it comes to putting on an event. And to be able to do that with the backdrop of Mardi Gras, uh, you look at the venues. Again, if you're, if you're a... a um, a person's got to coordinate events uh, to, to be able to fill those venues up with the sponsor parties and all the offshoots of the NBA All-Star Game, but also realizing, hey, you've got Mardi Gras balls and, and, and Mardi Gras festivities that have to go in these venues as well. Uh, and then you look at the hotel room situation, 99% occupancy last weekend. Uh, it was just it was an incredible weekend for, for, for the city, only to be topped off by Anthony Davis's historic performance in, in, in the All-Star Game, 52 points, uh, MVP uh, performance for him, and then, and then the world changed at about 10.45 on Sunday night as uh, DeMarcus Cousins and uh, Omar Caspi were traded to the Pelicans for basically a song. The expiring contract of Tyreek Evans, journeyman Langston Galloway, uh, the potential of number one draft choice Buddy Heald, and then 17th, uh, the 2017 first-round pick, which is uh, first through third, uh, pick protected, which is, I mean, an incredible deal right there. And a, and a second round pick that you got from Philadelphia, it's a high second round pick, but to be able to get an all-star center, one of the top centers in the league, uh, I'd say top three, uh, and uh, to get him for, for, for almost nothing, and then to get Caspi in the deal as well, got to give Dell Demps a lot of credit as he's been kind of berated on this program in the past. Uh, it was a steal, but all, all of a sudden, Lenny, everything just changes in terms of the psyche of New Orleans when it comes to basketball. People were waiting for LSU baseball and the NFL draft. Exactly. The, the whole thing changed on, on Sunday night on, on two fronts when, you know, Davis's performance, and then right on the heels of that, boom, that got knocked off the, uh, off the lead story when, uh, when the trade happens and the news breaks of the trade. It becomes official on Monday. But, look, all of a sudden, the Pelicans are relevant again. That's the easiest way to explain mm -hmm. this. They were irrelevant. And between All Star Weekend and, and look, look at the look at the storylines you were seeing out of All Star Weekend. It was how long, is Anthony Davis in New Orleans long term? Mm -hmm. Is you know what is you know some of the other thing? What you know in terms of hosting events in this city? Yes, the Sports Foundation give them a lot of credit mm -hmm. and city officials for pulling this together on short notice. And look, they did their homework. They knew this was a possibility for a long time. And as soon as the rug got pulled out from under Charlotte. They swept in and capitalized on an opportunity. And you don't want to see that happen to another market. But the fact of the matter is New Orleans does big events better than anyone. And to do it, like you mentioned, in the backdrop of Mardi Gras and everything that went on was tremendous. But all of that quickly moved to the back page, if you will, with the news of the Cousins deal. And, and look, I'll go back to what I said. New Orleans is relevant in the NBA again with that news. Ali, you were at the All-Star Game. You got a chance to kind of soak up the festivities there. And, you know, I mean, Lenny's right. I mean, the, the big story all week, the national press was prodding Anthony Davis over and over again about how can you stay in New Orleans on this rudderless ship? Uh, but, of course, that changed late Sunday night. Just your overall thoughts of, of, of the All-Star experience and then kind of morph into, obviously, the trade uh, that changed things here in New Orleans. Sure. It started off mildly and actually pretty well. Uh, on Friday, I want to mention Buddy Heald had a really good game for the Pelicans. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a good swang song when you look back at it. Mm -hmm. But he was the leading scorer, and it looked like he was going to get the MVP honors. But then Jamal Murray got hot down the stretch. So he, he sold away from him, but still, Heald had a good performance. So something to build on. Everybody, that was the story on Friday. How's he going to build onto it? Maybe he'll bounce on, you know, have a great second half of uh, the season. That's what the Pelicans really needed, too. So, j jump to Saturday. The, the uh, All-Star Saturday was kind of, I don't know, it just didn't have the pizzazz. The yes. slam dunk competition was kind of a bust. Mm -hmm. The skills challenge, Anthony Davis lost in the first round again. So, uh, not too much interest there. And, of course, Eric Gordon wins the three-point competition. Mm -hmm. You know, So, it was kind of, uh, I had a lot of fans tell me, and people at the uh, stadium, they, they just couldn't believe that. You know, well, they could believe it, but they didn't want to mm -hmm. believe it, that Eric Gordon comes back in and has this sh wonderful shooting performance. But then we move on to Sunday. Anthony Davis 
Now, the word was he was going to get his. He, everybody, you know, he even asked around all the players, his teammates, that, look, I want to win this. And, you know, they made it happen. We saw how many cherry-picking layups he had, dunks, lobs, you name it. I mean, they, I've honestly never seen a bigger, you know, lamer almost performance for an all-star game. Agreed. Usually in the fourth quarter they start playing defense, but there was just none, none. that entire game. So, you know, it's a nice half-hearted, good feeling all throughout the stadium. And then I heard about half an hour later, and everybody knows kind of Anthony Davis was a little bit happier than he should have been when he went up to the podium. Word is that he probably knew that something was about to or it did just go down. So, yeah, about half an hour later, I learned the news, and it was just unbelievable. All-star, you know, everything that happened during the All-Star weekend got swept underneath the rug. Boom. Uh, let's talk Boogie Cousins. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Well, let's talk Boogie Cousins. Let's talk the deal. Uh, on paper, it looks like the Pelicans stole um, uh, DeMarcus Cousins. Uh, but, I mean, in an essence, you know, you never get value for, for a superstar when you're trying to move that superstar, especially under the circumstances that the Kings were trying to move him. Your, your thoughts on the deal? By all indications, the, the Pelicans fleece the Kings in this deal. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's the simplest way to put it. And normally this, look, you, know, you and I have been around this area a long time. Normally, New Orleans is on the opposite side of those <laughs> well, don't deals. Don't you know that? Huh? Right. And, and, I mean, you start talking about, you, you know, my, my colleague at Sports Nola, Ken Trahan, and I were talking about, okay, biggest trades in New Orleans sports history. There haven't been a lot on the football side. Yeah. I mean, usually they involve players who are on the back ends of their careers. Right. You know, Archie Manning got traded. Mm -hmm. Earl Campbell came here. Right. There haven't been a lot. The one thing we came up with that might be comparable to this was Pete Maravich being acquired by the Jazz before their I don't first think game. Any doubt. That's the only thing that compares mm -hmm. to this from a trade perspective. And and look, it's uh, you know it's as we said. I mean, what they had to give up, or lack of what they had to give up. You wonder a little bit that you don't know what Buddy Heald has yet. And and so many times, very rarely do rookies perform at the level that they're going to perform at for the rest of their mm -hmm. career. Normally, they're underperforming. You, know, you, you want to compare Buddy Heald to somebody. Think about David West, how mm -hmm. he was as a yes. rookie. He was a bit player. Sure. Average, what, maybe two, three points a game. And then all of a sudden, you know, really exploded on the scene in the second and third year. You hope that doesn't happen. But you also had to give up something to get this kind of quality of player. Right. And look, you, you don't go finding centers of this caliber. They aren't there in the league anymore, okay? This league has become a perimeter-oriented mm -hmm. league, and, and obviously Cousins as well as Davis are two guys who could step out and play in the perimeter as well. They're not just guys who are locked down to play inside. So you, you just you, you can't pass an opportunity up like this, even if it means you know having to part with your first-round draft pick that you made this year, your first-round pick that you would have for next year. I, that's... In my mind, it was a small price to pay. I would agree with that. Ali, what can you add to it, uh, the, the deal itself? Because I, I agree with um, with Lenny. You look at the potential of Buddy Heald and you go, gosh, you hate to get rid of him. Uh, but at the same time, you got to give something to get something. And then, you know, all along I've been talking about, man, this 17 draft is going to be chock full of young players that can come in and help this team. But you look at the trade, one to three protected. If you happen not to make the playoffs, you still got a fighter's chance to be able to bring in a player that can help you immediately with one to three. Anything outside of that, usually in the NBA is a crapshoot, even though this is a deeper draft. What are your thoughts on the trade? The trade is an incredible deal. There's a lot of things that were very fortunate that went New Orleans way. Uh, supposedly, as Vladi Divac revolved, he shouldn't have even said anything, but he stated that there was a better deal just a day or two ago. And, you know, that's incredible in itself. But then when you factor in that Dell Demps didn't have to give up multiple first-round picks. Like, for instance, Brooke Lopez. That's what he was commanding with the New Jersey Nets. Or, I'm sorry, Brooklyn Nets. Right. And uh, they've lowered their price since. But there was a high, high, high cost to getting a very you know, prominent name. So DeMarcus Cousins fetching what he did, that, that was just astounding. And to, to, to go to your point that the Pelicans kind of did protect themselves, which they, they did with uh, protecting the top one through three pick, or uh, the, the protections on the first-round pick, the big thing is that Buddy Heald has not performed as well as most people want to mm -hmm. believe that he is right now. Uh, if you look at the numbers, he is honestly projecting to be one of the worst 23-year-old rookies in the NBA shooting guard. Um, I know that he's picked it up from the outside, mm -hmm. but he's really not doing anything else. He's not rebounding. The defense isn't there. He's not passing the ball. Um, it's not looking good. So for you know the general manager of the Sacramento Kings to go out and even mention in the same breath him with Stephen Curry... I just don't see it. So, yeah. Dell Demps all around got a great deal. 
And that's a great segue because Dell Demps got a reprieve. You know, for him, it's a no lose situation. Uh, for all indications are, you would think that uh, under normal circumstances, the way you run an NBA franchise, Demps with two chances to turn this franchise around, two chances to rebuild it, with not a lot of skins on the wall, really. Uh, he rolls the dice. He brings in the, the, uh, a, a player that you probably would not have been able to woo to New Orleans in free agency. Uh, a guy that's got some negatives, and we'll get into that in a moment. But it's, seven, it's basically a, a, a one and a, and a third seasons. And if Boogie Cousins works out, well, you know, Dell's, they'll be here a while. If he doesn't, he's gone anyway. So Demps pulled a rabbit out of his hat, honestly, at the 11th hour. And uh, now looks, I mean, you can see him at the press conference. I mean, when's the last time you've seen Dell Demps in public? Okay, but he was out public at the press conference and all smiles. Amazing, isn't it? With, with, the, with this, this turn of events that's, that's brought about because well, he, he made this happen, you know, how, how, whatever part he played in it still, you know, whether he lowballed or whatever it was and got somebody to bite. That's uh, that's what your job is, right? You, know, you try to try to get somebody to to bite on something less than what you uh, what you want to have to do, and uh, like you said, by all indications, not having to give up the second one, um, you know, not having to give up Drew Holiday. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of things could have been in that deal, mm-hmm. and were not. So, and look, you like you said, you weren't going to get a guy like Cousins in free agency, and now. With two cornerstones in place for at least the next 107 games in Cousins and Davis, you've got the possibility, either through a trade, through free agency or whatever, of getting that third piece. And hey, maybe Drew Holiday is that third piece. In reality, you would expect he was going to walk at the end of this Agreed. year. Okay, now all of a sudden he's a viable option to re-sign here. Uh, you know, assuming you can afford him as well, because he's, he stands to make more than what he was making uh, this year. No doubt. What can you add? The Pelicans can definitely uh, bring Drew Holiday back. I looked at the numbers and everything, and uh, they've, they've got a, what's called a cap hold, and it's worth about $17 million. So it's going to eat up basically the rest of the Pelicans' uh, salary. That is if they don't make any trades between now mm-hmm. and uh, when it comes time to sign free agents. But that means since uh, they've got his uh, bird rights, they're going to be able to bring him back no matter what the price is. So right. my expectation is they're going to not only bring him back, but they're also going to try and create some cap room. And um, I don't know if we should be getting into this just yet, but anyways, that they'll not only add Drew, Drew Holly, but they're going to bring another like one or two small key free agents too during the okay, summer. Okay, we'll get into that a little bit later as well. All right, let's talk the positive top three center, a guy that can score. He can score outside. He can score inside. Uh, he's a he can rebound. He's a space eater. All of a sudden, Anthony Davis doesn't have to do everything on the court. Uh, he can face the basket now and um, and utilize the three point shot, taking guys off the dribble. Uh, his ability to, to slash to the basket and clean up around the basket defensively. Uh, now, Davis's guy is a guy that can, that can be an off-the-ball defender, off-the-ball shot blocker. I mean, when you look at the positives here, I mean, they're, 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 they are enormous for this team. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, every, everything you just said there, I mean, the ability to, you know, use these guys high post, low post, you know, bring guys, you know, however it is you, you plan on altering the offense because really for the last – Two months they've played without a center. Mm-hmm. Basically, they gave up on on Ashik and Ajinsen and said, you know, we're we're going to play Anthony Davis at center and you know go about things that way, which is not Anthony Davis's best position, but it was best for the team. And you know, trying to get the best five players on the floor. Now you're getting it back in a more natural position, and I think it opens things up tremendously. Yeah, it really does. And and, and look, uh, a lot of. A lot of really good things can happen with these two guys if they mesh. I mean, I just talked about some of them, but automatically now Anthony Davis doesn't have the burden of carrying this team, and maybe that helps him with these nagging injuries that he's had in the past. Your thoughts on how these guys will coexist and how Cousins helps Davis's game and Davis will help Cousins' game? It may sound a little optimistic to say, but as a hometown fan, but it's going to be a boon. Anthony Davis has never truly, you know, relished being that top dog, being the guy in charge, being aggressive. I'm going to take charge on every play if I need to. We haven't seen that out of him. Same thing with Drew Holiday. That's why he's been kind of iffy on this whole being, you know, the team's second banana. Now you bring in a guy like DeMarcus Cousins who has no problems carrying the whole world on his shoulders. Now Anthony Davis can go back to playing not only just the position power forward, take less of a beating, but he can go ahead and not be the guy. And then Drew Holiday, who loves to dish, 
and uh, make plays for others before you know trying to look for his offense first. It's just such a win-win situation on paper. Um, I don't I don't see any negatives honestly when you just look at it from you know such an overhead picture. Right. And, and and one thing I did mention is Cousins' ability to pass out of the post, which a lot of which is very very underrated if you really look at his game. I mean people talk about his outside shot. But the guy is unselfish. You give him a reason to be able to, all guys around him that, that can catch and shoot, uh, they should have a field day. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Eric. You know what's funny? I just noticed this, but his assist percentage is about just four or five points off from what Tyreek Evans was. When you're that close to, you know, what a point guard mm-hmm. does on the floor, yeah, it's, it's going to open up the world for the, the offense. Yeah. What was the stat I heard? He's got more three-pointers this year than Buddy Heald That does. too, yeah. yeah. Six, yeah. More. That's Six more. It is remarkable, yeah. isn't it? That's remarkable. Well, that's all the positives. That's the superlatives. The negative is he's a volatile guy. Uh, it's been chaos uh, with um, Cousins in uh, Sacramento. Uh, he's uh, been in a situation where the technical fouls uh, have started to cost the team. He gets another technical foul here in New Orleans. He's suspended. I mean, uh, he's got 17. From now on, it's suspension. Um, uh, it's been he has had a cancerous rep in, in, in Sacktown. You look at uh, coaches, players. Uh, the front office, whether it's uh, bullying, uh, a malcontent, uh, uh, whatever it is at this point, uh, he, had got, he, he gained a very, very uh, bad reputation in, um, in Sacramento. The question is, was it because of the losing, as some people have said, or is it a maturity issue, and, and can that be solved by the change of venue? Well, that's a, that's a great question, and obviously it's going to get answered over the next 25 games, but I, you bring up a big point about the technicals. Unfortunately, when the trade happens, the, the slate doesn't get wiped clean in that regard, and he's still got the 17 tees, and every other technical he gets now, he gets suspended for a game. You do the math, he's beginning a tee every three games or so. Does that mean he's sitting every sixth game right. here in New Orleans? That's, that's not what you're paying for. I mean, that's basically, you know, 25 games left in the season. He could potentially, at that rate, would sit four to 25 games. That's not what you want. But you hope, you know, he is a little happier yeah, it, it does reflect the concern is this. Referees are human, and they know this guy has a reputation out there, and are, are they looking for him the first time he blinks wrong or, or makes, a, makes a funny face that he gets teed up, even though maybe he doesn't deserve it, is he getting targeted in that regard? And you, you hope that's not the case, but it's something certainly you have to be concerned about. What about the... Uh, the, the, the personality issues, the, the problems that in the locker room, the problems with the front office uh, in Sacramento. Can a change of venue be a good thing for DeMarcus Cousins, who professed his love for Sacramento, by the way, was not a guy that wanted to leave that city, and you saw that in almost his tearful farewell uh, to the fans there. Yeah, I, I caught that too. That, that, he's been known for the people that are true Kings fans that he's done a lot for that community, yes. and he's, he's desperately in love with that city. Um, it broke him up to leave, but as far as the original question, no, I don't have as many concerns as a lot of the people in the media are talking about. You're, first of all, picking them out of this bubble where the media, honestly, in Sacramento, at least half of them always kind of had it out for him. If you watch the questions, if you watch how they wrote their articles, it was kind of always either negative or always just focused on Cousins, you know, all, all, the, neg- all the negativity, whether it's on the court or in the locker room. But here, I expect that not only being around Anthony Davis, a, a brand new coach, a, a new system, and it sounds like Dell Demps has gone out of his way, even from the initial phone call. And Cousins has remarked on numerous uh, occasions already, even in the press conference, how it's been great that Alvin Gentry and Dell Demps came out to see me. They've talked to me through it. They made me feel better. I mean, it, he's already starting to say the right things. And this guy honestly says what he believes. He's not going to, you know, kind of beat around the bush, so to speak. Um, so I'm taking it to word that he's honestly kind of already made the steps. And But the biggest thing I found that, Today during the press conference was the fact that Anthony Davis mentioned we're going to watch him carefully. We're not afraid to speak to him, and if he gets out of hand, we're going to try and calm him down. You know, it's going to be very important to avoid that technical, as Lenny just brought up, because right. yeah, every every game matters here on now. So even just you know one or two more, those two games could decide yep. Yep. No, no the playoffs. Matters. One one point that we just made about the, the the whole travel situation. You know, Mr. Benson allowing. Dell Demps and Alvin Gentry to go out on his private plane to go get those guys from Sacramento and bring them back. The players that went from New Orleans to Sacramento flew commercial to mm-hmm. go get out there yesterday. Yes. 
Uh, that's huge. And what it does it's is... A little, it's a little thing, and it right. says something about the commitment of the organization. And, 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 and I'll take it a step further. The commitment to have him here long term, okay, to say this is the type of player you are, mm -hmm. this is the type of way, way you should be treated, uh, we're going to roll off the red carpet for you because maybe things didn't go well in Sacramento, but you got a clean slate here in New Orleans, and we're going to build a championship around you and Davis. I think it sent a great message to him. And maybe, by the way, maybe he's really wearing zero because that's how many technical fouls he intends to get here. Uh, maybe can, so. We, we can only that's hope. That's a great idea. We, we can that's only hope. That's a great idea. All right. This is the, the big question here. First of all, will he buy into the Pelicans? I would think right now he's not just playing for a contract with the Pelicans. He's playing for his next contract in this league. Obviously, the Pelicans can play him, pay him more than any other team in the league if he, if he chooses to re-sign with the Pelicans. But he's still this is still an audition, as you mentioned, 107 games. It's a 107-game audition to the rest of the league to show that he has matured, he's grown up, and he can be a cornerstone for a franchise. Well, it is. And, and, and look, the other thing is this. Let's, let's break it down. You've got 25 games left this year and hopefully some playoffs that follow that. Yeah. He could sign an extension this summer. And you know, then perhaps he's off the market and you, you've got, you know, if, if things really go well here, you know, in these next two months, then we don't have to worry about what happens next year, perhaps. So th there's, there's that. But you're, you're right. It is, this has got to be a clean slate for him and let's see how he does, and, and, and a real chance all of a sudden for both he and for Anthony Davis, yes. okay, to maybe get something done and all of a sudden form a formidable duo out there that all of a sudden is going to be feared around the league. You know, uh, Ali, I always felt when I, when I looked at this, this trade and you look at Sacramento and New Orleans and you look at Davis and, and Cousins, they were in, they, the situations mirrored each other in a lot of cases. Both teams not going anywhere. Both teams having really one really big superstar, young guy, University of Kentucky. Uh, and uh, without each other, probably, you know, mired in mediocrity. With each other, a chance to do something special. One of my writers just actually two days ago wrote about exactly what you're talking about. They could be special. Just as the Warriors are special with their shooting, mm -hmm. Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, the big thing everybody needs to realize Quit chasing that dream, the small ball dream, which is a lot of GMs, and that's what they're doing out there right now. I like where Dell Demps is going. He went in a different direction. Why don't I build something that nobody else has, and maybe that can thwart whatever Golden State has, you know, beat small ball. Mm -hmm. There's an interesting stat that I want to mention. Golden State Warriors on the year, they're 31-0 and 0 when they win the rebounding uh, edge in the category. They're 16-9 and 9 when they lose. When you put DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis on the floor together, I don't see how Golden State Warriors can even possibly compete with them on the inside. So that's a great that's the key. That's going to be the key. It's really going to be is. special. Uh, Mobile, Alabama. Much like Nick Fairley, who's just across the hall uh, uh, with, with the New Orleans Saints, a Mobile, Alabama native. Fairley comes in with, again, uh, the head case tag. Uh, he plays a great season for the, for the Saints last year, looking to be able to cash in on a contract. The hope is that uh, he'll be able to stay with the Saints. Uh, one of the reasons why he came to New Orleans, proximity to Mobile, Alabama, uh, and, and his support system. Same could be said true now for DeMarcus Cousins. There were whispers that his agent was trying to um, steer the, uh, the Kings into trading him to either Atlanta, Memphis, or New Orleans. New Orleans with the proximity to uh, Mobile works. Uh, the hope is that uh, being so close to Mobile, that both him and Fairley will, will, be, will, will stay with this, these teams long term. Yeah, it would, it sounds great to me. I mean, there's, look, it's, everybody's situation is unique. There's no doubt about that. But certainly being close to your support system, having them be able to just get in the car and drive two hours and mm -hmm. see your games, uh, the Mobile market, being able to see games on TV, that all, you know, that all can play into things, certainly. Uh, and let's see, obviously, let's see how, how it all plays out, but it's, that's another, you know, plus in the Pelicans column. And great point about the mobile market, being able to see the games on TV, because that's huge. That really is huge. You know, you had to go to direct TV to be able to watch him if you were part of his family in, in, uh, in Sacramento. Now, I mean, it's right there. And plus, when you look at both guys, both guys have spent time in New Orleans in their childhood growing up. They're familiar with the city. This is not a new place to live for either uh, Fairley or, in this case, Cousins. I've got a first-hand experience about Mobile. I lived there just a, a year ago. After Katrina, my wife and I, we moved out to Mobile mm -hmm. for, you know, job relocation. Sure. So uh, we, we came to love the city, but it, there was nothing, you know, there's no professional sports there. We, we missed it. So I, that's when I fell in love with the Pelicans, following them, maintaining everything. But as Lenny just pointed out, they got the uh, television expansion as to where the coverage for local Pelicans games reached out there about four or five years ago. That became a big deal, actually. NBA fans started popping up in the city, 
And moreover, I want to mention that DeMarcus Cousins, he is very closely tied to Mobile. I've had a lot of work associates that have flown uh, to and from Mobile, and guess who's been on the plane? DeMarcus Cousins with family members. Right. So, he, he, yeah, this is a right. big deal, that he's two hours away from a hometown that he still visits. Right. He still calls it home. And that, that was one of the things he mentioned as well, uh, again, the proximity to, um, uh, to Mobile. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to continue the conversation about the Pelicans, DeMarcus Cousins. We're going to get into Omir Caspi as well. We'll talk a little bit about him. Uh, we'll talk about the future of the Pelicans, who they, uh, what they, how much money they may have to be able to sign other players. Uh, as we're taping this program, uh, the trading deadline has ended. Uh, you know, whether the Pelicans will add another piece to the puzzle. We'll talk about that coming back as well. You're watching Inside New Orleans Sports each and every Thursday night right here on WLE at 6 p.m. 10 o'clock on Fridays on WLAE and statewide, 9 o'clock, Pelican Sports Television every Friday night. Lenny Van Gilder of SportsNormal.com, Ali Cosell of The Bird Rights are our guests tonight. I'm your host, Eric Asher. We'll be right back. Located at 3701 Iberville Street in Mid-City is Katie's Restaurant and Bar. Open seven days a week, Katie's offers daily specials for lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch. Serving New Orleans cuisine such as fried shrimp platters, grilled redfish, and a fully stocked bar. And don't forget about our expanded event seating and local entertainment. Featured on the Best of Food Network's diners, drive-ins, and dives, Katie's Restaurant and Bar. Amco Fence, locally owned and operated since 1976. Fully licensed and insured and a member of the BBB, Amco serves both residential and commercial customers. If you're looking to repair, replace, or install a fence for security or aesthetic reasons, Amco Fence supplies wooden, metal, chain link, vinyl, and ornamental or automatic gates. Amco aims to satisfy your fencing needs. Amco Fence, 504-468-9559 or amcofencecompany.com. TikTok Cafe, located on Causeway South at the I-10 in Metairie, is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Our menu offers breakfast dishes like our Western omelet made from scratch biscuits, grits, egg sunny side up, and lunch specials like our homemade cheeseburgers with a side of golden brown fries. Don't forget about our weekday lunch special and that every Tuesday is steak night. TikTok Cafe, open 24-7 at Causeway South at the I-10 in Metairie. Welcome back to Inside New Orleans Sports. Great panel for you tonight. Lenny Van Gilder of SportsNewall.com, Ali Cosell of The Bird Rights. And uh, guys, um, it, uh, for Alvin Gentry, he's got to make a little bit of a change again. He comes to New Orleans and doesn't have a team that really fits what he wants to do in his free-flowing, wide-open, Golden State-type offense. Of course, uh, and he was running that offense long before Golden State was. Uh, now he's in a situation where he's got to be able to be able to go maybe change this up and be more inside out with two legitimate all-star big men on this team. Uh, the question is, first of all, how quickly can he develop that system? Okay, and uh, that'll feature the skill sets of Davis and Cousins. And then the second part of that is, how quickly can the Pelicans gel with just 25 games left in the season? Uh, that's something normally you put in in an off season. Not in the middle, not with the, with the last third of the season, you know, kind of staring you in the face. Yeah, what's what's going to be interesting to see? I, I think what's left of this year has almost be got to be some kind of mishmash. Mm -hmm. Continuing to do some of the things you're doing, but emphasize the strength of your of your big guys. You can't just overhaul your offense and one or two practices uh, after you after you make this move. But uh, you just you just uh, again you've got to be able to play to your strengths and all of a sudden your strength is your inside game and if that means you've got to slow things down a little bit get a little bit more methodical in what you do and not you know constantly you know, push things they, look they've not been a they've, they've not been a team that's all about just trying to outrun you down the floor they do enough things in the half court it just changes the emphasis of what you're doing in the half court game now and that it's got to run inside out you can't live on the perimeter do you think that, that it's something that, the, that Coach Gentry can do on the run to be able to, again, take advantage of the skill set of AD and Cousins, especially on the inside? Well, we know what he can do on the outside. We've seen it with other teams, but on the inside. Actually, I do believe it, and it's all because of DeMarcus Cousins' skill set. As we mentioned earlier on the show, his assist percentage, his ability to pass and find others is really astounding for a big man. I think that's going to work. For instance, in the first uh, practice for DeMarcus Cousins, it was said uh, that he overpassed, that both he and Anthony Davis. So that's a good thing. He's not going to look for a shot. He's not going to jack up everything that he first touches. 
They're going to look, they're going to try the ball movement. And that's why I think Alvin Gentry is going to be successful. He preaches ball movement and running. They don't need to do as much running as Lenny kind of alluded to. They just need to be able to work the ball. And with having Drew Holiday and DeMarcus Cousins on the floor that are wonderful passers, I think the rest of the guys are going to kind of catch on. They're going to have where they're going to show in the first 5, 10 games these streaks. They're going to go on these runs where they're going to have a quarter. That's amazing. They're going to put up 40 points. It's going to be beautiful ball movement. But then, as you said, they're going to also have those hiccups, and they're going to have to rely on going inside. That's where Alvin Gentry hopefully kind of loosens the reins and lets that happen. Just go ahead, do your stuff. That's what you're good at. We're going to have to rely on it for a little bit. One of the things that I will be curious to see here in the early going is what this does to the rotation and how you're going to mm. you know, manage that. I mean, obviously, there's going to be times that you're going to want both big guys on the floor. You can't have them both playing 48 minutes, though. Do you, do you try to keep them out there together and take them both out together? Do you play just Cousins? Do you play just Davis and put him back at the mm -hmm. five where he's been playing so much now? You know, where, is, where does Holiday figure into this mix? Uh, you know, obviously with, you know, getting rid of all of these guards that you did, Tim Frazier's going to play a huge part mm -hmm. going forward. And uh, he, the, the bit time that he's gotten has been solid. He's yes. just been, been, a, been caught in a numbers game, Agreed. really. Agreed. Lenny, it's a great point. Yeah, I think that's exactly what you're pointing to. The second unit is going to be the one that's going to run, I feel. They just got Caspi. Who, he, he, that's his game. He's a cutter. He's a shooter from the outside. You put him out there with maybe Davis at the five, Tim Frazier's pushing the ball up, and then, you know, have a couple other guys running on the wings, that, that's going to be where they push the pace. And that, that's a great call. That's yeah. what they're going to have to look for. And, and let's stay with Caspi for a moment because he's kind of a throw-in in this deal, but he's more than a throw-in for a team that lost so many shooters. The guy may be getting up in age in the NBA, but the guy can shoot the basketball. And he's, he's going to have to be able to, and that's something in reality they've, they've not gotten enough of, especially from the small forward position. So uh, anything, anything he adds in this obviously is, is Lanyard. Yeah, Solomon Hale had a very slow start to the year. He just couldn't connect from the outside. I remember in the first month he was around maybe 30%, then it went up to like 35 Only recently he's actually taken off. I think over the last 15, 20 games he's having a very respectable average. But no, Caspi, he's had season after season he's been wonderful from the outside. So if Hill's having a tough, uh, tough game, throw Caspi out there for 25 minutes. He can provide that shooting. Can they gel over the next 25 games to be able to capture the eighth seed? Yes. I think so. They, uh, when looking at the schedule, they're going to have the first 10 games or so coming up. It's kind of tough. And, of course, that's where they're going to have to do most of their gelling. But the biggest thing about the schedule is the New Orleans Pelicans face the Denver Nuggets three more times this year and the Portland Trail Blazers twice. And that's all going to be a little bit further down the road. They're going to determine their fate in those five games. Those, that's, who, that's who's ahead of them in the standings right now. Can they so gel? Good, so you've got to beat, exactly, those, those two teams. And, yeah, I think so. And the question is... It may not happen as fast as everybody thinks. I mean, they may be looking for it, you know, Thursday night against the Rockets. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to happen that quick. It's going to take some time. And, uh, again, getting back to the rotation thing, it's going to be interesting to see just how Gentry uses mm -hmm. Cousins early on. Does he ease him into this thing, or does he just stick him out there 40 mm -hmm. minutes uh, right away? That's, that's going to be interesting to for me to see another one of those things I'm going to be looking for here. Well, and then the log gone. jam at center as well. You've got um, uh, Ashik and Agensa, who, uh, again, are at the end of the bench. Maybe Agensa might be moved. Uh, the trading dead is, again, as we're taping this program, uh, the trading deadline is not uh, commenced yet. Uh, you've got Terrence Jones, his uh, agent, as soon as the deal was made, asked for them to move him because, again, he's playing for 600000 this year. He was trying to parlay this into a big deal for next year. He's been a, a pretty good player for this team this year. And you got Monte Yunus, again, who is, again, a real nice piece, uh, who, again, will be looking for a contract elsewhere. So it'll be interesting to see how, the, how those guys mix and match going forward as well. Yeah, it's, you know, you went from, from having uh, too many guards to having too many big guys yeah. just that quickly. Uh, and you got you to resolve them. Obviously, we'll, if something happens before the trade deadline to, to, to allow for that, will there be some, uh, some waiver moves made and such? They obviously have to do something, you know, at the guard position there with, with a three-for-two trade, they were a man short anyway. So, look, it's, uh, you know, all, all those things have to work themselves out. Obviously, you can't make any more trades after Thursday afternoon, but you've still got the ability to do some things via the waiver. And, and you also have the ability for teams that buy out their the players that want to make up, uh, have some cap space, want to get rid of some veterans. They may be on, on the street as well. And though, in the past, they may not have looked the Pelicans' way. They're looking to hook on with a team that has a chance to win a championship. But maybe with those two guys on the floor, maybe they're looking the Pelicans' way as well. 
Here's the question, Ali. Do they have enough assets? I'm talking about the Pelicans mm -hmm. now to make another deal to bring in some shooters before the trading deadline. Do they have players uh, that other teams may covet on this roster? Yes. Their biggest asset right now that's remaining is their other 2017 second round pick. That's the one they have, not the one they just dealt that was via Philly. Um, that's the first uh, big asset. But the next one is a couple of players. I'm looking particularly at Terrence Jones. He's had a great year. Now, granted, when he gets traded to another team, the team that he's going to, just like the New Orleans Pelicans, don't have their bird rights. So he's going to be an unrestricted free agent this summer. But there's 25 games left, and he's going to want to prove himself for his next contract, as well as the team that brings him in is probably going to try and invite him to have a nice big role. So it's going to be kind of beneficiary and that they're going to kind of have that, that jump start to maybe re-sign him. Like, for instance, I've heard that even the Miami Heat have considered going after Terrence Jones. And on Miami Heat's roster, you know who I'm looking at is Dion Waiters. Mm -hmm. I know everybody's made fun of this guy in the past, but he's actually put together a really nice, solid season. Over the last two months, he's been a, an effective scorer. And that's not something you could say over the course mm -hmm. of his career. But if we can't get Dion Waiters, uh, there are a couple smaller pieces that the Pelicans can chase with a couple of assets I mentioned. One particular one that I would love to see come is Drew Holiday's brother, Justin Holiday. Mm -hmm. He's up in New York. And uh, the salaries work straight up with, uh, for Terrence Jones' swap. If the Knicks want the second round pick, I would give it to them if I'm Dell Demps. To combine the brothers, and Justin's having a great year from the mm -hmm. shooting from the outside, yes. great defense. He's mm -hmm. playing great defense and all that. So there's a few moves that they can still make. Do you feel they have assets to make a move at the second round? I, I, I do. And the, the interesting thing about Jones, and, and look, Ali understands more of the, the nuances of being able to make deals and how things have to, to work in the, you know, in, the, in the trade rules and such, but Jones being such a you know, a, a low-end salary, would that then give them the ability to go tag an Ashik or an Ajinsa in a deal to get somebody with a, you know, with a bigger salary at that point and the other team could just mm -hmm. either keep them or let them walk, whatever the case may be? So I, I yeah, I agree, Lenny. Yeah, they, nobody's going to want Ashik. He, he's just a stone, basically. No, but there's a few teams that may want Ajinsa. And the reason for it is not every team's even hit the salary floor yet. Uh, so by the dra trade deadline, or I'm sorry, by the end of the year, they have to hit a certain level. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're going to be penalized, just like a team that goes over the tax. Yes. So that could be an interesting way for, you know, to get up to the salary floors by getting a Jensen who's not really too, cost, too costly. About $3 so, million a year. Yeah. Next year is going to be about $4.9 mm -hmm. million. Yeah. yeah, it's slowly escalating. But like uh, Lenny said, attach Terrence mm -hmm. Jones, attach a second-round pick. Maybe you can get a, somebody that's on the end of a bench. Uh, for instance, somebody threw this out the other day, Marcus Thornton. How great would it be if he could come back to this mm -hmm. area and, ha you know, revive his career? He's mm -hmm. currently on the Washington Wizards. He's not doing anything. He's just mm -hmm. sitting on the end of the bench. Right. So, and, and is, is, Tom, is Tom Benson allowed to have anyone who's an LSU graduate on the payroll? Uh, I, don't, well, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. <laughs> you know so yeah, that, that could just, be a tiger with a circle and a slash in those offices. I'm, I'm going to throw another interesting name. and I don't. He was already traded once this year, and I, I don't know. You talk about New Orleans connections. What about Mike Dunleavy Jr.? Mm -hmm. Maybe he wants to be down here with Dad. Right. You know, he'd be a great shooter. Yes. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if Atlanta wants to part with him at this mm -hmm. point, but... Just a thought. Yeah, right. it would be be somebody who, who isn't gonna isn't gonna cost you an arm and a leg to be able to get. Um, they, they need guys that can space the floor. That's what they need to look for now. Uh, what about when we walk in looking at this offseason? And again, the first uh, priority is re-signing Drew Holiday. You mentioned a little bit earlier. Your thoughts? Can they re-sign Drew Holiday going into into this offseason? As of Saturday, I'd have said no. It wouldn't right. happen. Now I think the, the the game has totally changed. I think Holiday wants to be here. Look, I. I don't think you can undervalue the fact of how this organization supported him uh, last summer and last fall with, with the personal issues he was dealing with. And that, uh, that, in my mind, will carry a lot of weight in addition to the fact that this team just made itself a lot better. Mm -hmm. What can you add? Absolutely. I, I, from what I've been hearing, Drew Holiday does want to stay here. He's, he's fully committed. He just wanted to kind of explore his options because, let's face it, Nobody wants to play for a perennial loser, and that's where the Pelicans were kind of headed. But this, DeMarcus Cousins has totally changed everything, and I fully expect them to be back. Now, the biggest thing is going to be the cost. Um, is he going to fetch and command a max salary, which would start him roughly around $25 million next year? That's a huge chunk of space going to three guys, if you think about it. So that's, that's probably what's going to happen behind the closed doors, how much give and take Dell Demps is willing to take. I'm pretty sure, though, he's going to meet his demands. Um, do they have the cap room at the end of the season, to, to, as they stand right now, to, um, to, to um, first of all, lure another player in here to be able to um, uh, fill some needs, especially when you're talking about guys that can shoot the basketball? 
There's a few things they can do. For instance, the number one thing everybody's looking at is Omar Sheik. You almost have to wave him and stretch him. Mm -hmm. That's not regularly done, but what that does, it takes he's owed about another $33 million after this year. That'll, instead of being paid out to him over the next three years, that'll be paid out over seven years. So thereby, he'll make roughly about, what, 4.2, 4.3, something like that next year. So instead of the Pelicans on the books being responsible for 10 and a half, 11 million, mm -hmm. next season it will drop down to four and a half. They're six million. Uh, another thing you got to address is Quincy Pondexter's mm -hmm. situation. He hasn't played in, well, since the playoffs, mm -hmm. you know, two, almost two years ago now. And he's got one more year remaining. The Pelicans should explore, and I expect them to, uh, a medical retirement. And that would basically take off his $3.8 million that's left for next year off the books. Um, if Quincy Bondexter and the doctors determine that his career is in jeopardy, and I don't see how anybody can say otherwise, right. considering he hasn't been on the floor forever, that would save another $4 million. Uh, another thing to look at, Dante Cunningham. He's got, I think, what is it, a $3.1 million player option to come back. Considering how well he shot the ball, considering the market, as, as we've talked about, mm -hmm. the league is searching for you know, small ball players. He's a perfect fit as a four for a lot of teams. He's probably going to find something more than $3 million a year. You so think I he'll expect opt out. He'll opt out. So, that, so now we're looking at about $12, about $12 million in cap space. Mm -hmm. And then if you could move a Jensa or by some miracle, Ashik, Boom, you're talking now big players. You may be able to chase them free agency. That's, that's great information. Um, all right, let's, let's talk about CP3, okay? Uh, my phone's been blowing up, so social media, uh, email. Uh, CP3 back to New Orleans. Uh, you know, come here uh, and, and get with the two Twin Towers. Um, on paper, you say to yourself, well, okay, uh, CP3 getting a little bit up in age. He's starting to break down a little bit. I mean, look, we saw how physical he was here in New Orleans for his stature. Uh, you look at... Uh, from a contractual standpoint, there's been talk that um, that they're going to max him out in, in, in Los Angeles with the Clippers. That you know, be two hundred million dollars. If not, uh, that, that again, the Pelicans would be like any other team would have the opportunity to be able to to get him in here with like one hundred seventy million, something like that, over four years. Um, and then you know, the field general. I mean, the guy. He is a guy that could come in and be a great influence on both Davis and Cousins, and maybe a guy that could kind of keep Cousins in line. I just don't see it. I don't see it happening. I don't see him leaving Los Angeles, even if the Clippers were ultimately to let him go and decide not to resign him. Let's say they, they, don't, they get to the uh, Western Conference Finals and they don't win and decide to blow up the Clippers. I think he walks right across the hall to the Los Angeles Lakers. I don't think he comes back to New Orleans. So I think that's kind of wishful thinking on the part of, of the fan base to bring CP3 back. I think they should look at Drew Holiday and appreciate who the, what he is as a guard and realize right now, at least for the seeable future, he's probably the third piece of, of, of those three superstars or three all-stars that are on this roster. I'll take you first. You were there when CP3 uh, first made it here as, as a Hornet. Uh, you saw him push his way out of New Orleans. Any opportunity for him to come back? It's an opportunity, certainly. I mean, you're dealing with <laughs> You know, di different everything than when he was here last. So, look, it's anything's in play. Obviously, if you don't re-up Holiday, then I think that becomes an option, and, and he and he doesn't take the doesn't take the Clippers offer, which would be which would be a bigger deal. So, if, if he's out there, any, anything's in play. The thing you got to remember is, all of a sudden, free agents are going to be attracted to New Orleans where they weren't before. It was one thing to play with Anthony Davis, and that's great. Now, all of a sudden, if you've got Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins and perhaps you are even able to get that extension mm -hmm. done this summer to where you know both of those guys are here for at least the next, what, four years four or so, years. Mm -hmm. all right, then why, why wouldn't, why wouldn't a, a top-tier point guard want to come play mm -hmm. with those two guys down low? No, I agree. Chris Paul is probably looking at his options, and all of a sudden New Orleans might have become a possible destination. Um, I don't expect it, Eric. Honestly, just like you were saying, everybody's coming to you. I, I just don't see it. There's too many things that would have to happen for it to happen. Uh, they need to make the space on the roster, on the set salary cap sheet. Uh, you'd probably have to make some amends with you know, some certain people here in town. Uh, I, I just don't see it. There, there's too much history, you, you almost have to say, mm -hmm. for him to come back here. But the biggest thing that's going to determine whether Chris Paul or another big-time free agent comes into town is their last 25 games. Now, everybody can say, we've got DeMarcus Cousins, we've got Anthony Davis, but they have to prove it. Is it going to be a logical and a smart destination for these free agents? If, they, if the Pelicans can go and say, let's say they theoretically finish about 15 and 10, they go on some absurd win streak here or there, or they just finish strongly, 
teams are going to, or I'm sorry, players are going to look at this situation in New Orleans a lot differently than if they just kind of finish the season on a mediocre 500 type of record. Mm -hmm. So the 25 game is going to be very important, something to watch, not just for whether New Orleans makes the playoffs, but free agents. Are they going to be interested in coming here? Is my, 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 my question uh, that, that I'll piggyback on his. With the present roster as it stands, if, if they, they're not able to make another move, uh, can they get into the playoffs? Can they win with this present roster, in your opinion? As bad as the bottom end of the West is, certainly. I mean, you're talking about having to make up two and a half games. You know, if you can win you know, two out of three over Denver right there, mm -hmm. that's, th those three games are going to really dictate as much as anything else. If you lose two out of three to them, now you've lost the tiebreaker and you've dropped a game further back and you only got 22 games that you've got to get what, four games past the, past the Nuggets at that point. So those are, the, those are the key games, and, you know, I think in, in everybody's mind at this point, we'll see, you know, we'll see how it all shakes out. Ali? I think this roster can win, honestly. Uh, we, there's been a couple streaks they even had this year where it kind of shocked and took everybody by surprise. The, the wins over the uh, San Antonio Spurs, the Cavaliers, and uh, Davis didn't even play against the Cavaliers, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that they can do it. They, as long as everybody fits their role, and Alvin Gentry can kind of establish some kind of system, and, and the guys work amongst themselves, which you almost have to think. I'm just not expecting any problems because of the mentality of Drew Holiday and Anthony Davis. And, and it seems like it's a month ago, but they right before the break, they went on a 3-1 and one mm -hmm. road trip, right. which, ironically, the one loss was to Sacramento, right. who's obviously a team you, you know, you'd probably beat easily now with, your, with this trade having happened. Right. Uh, the guys that they let go, uh, for the most part, not great defensive players, this has been a team that was the emphasis this past offseason was to upgrade the defense. Um, I think when Cousins coming in, they become a better defensive player, a better defensive team because he's a pretty good defensive player. What are your thoughts now? What does this lineup look like? What does this starting lineup look like for this team? And do they continue their, their stingy defensive play uh, under the current conditions? Yes, I think Darren Ehrman, what he established is a switching defense with the guys. That's why uh, they moved basically Anthony Davis to center. They want to have the versatility to be able to switch on every single pick and roll, uh, cut, you name it. So they're going to be able to do that with DeMarcus Cousins because if, if, if anybody's ever watched him play, this guy is an agile 270, 280-pound man. If you see him on offense, he can weave, he can put the uh, ball between his legs, get to the rim easily against shoot small forwards. The question is, though, with him has always been, can he put that same amount of effort on defense? We're going to find out. But he, he's got the talent, but I'm not sure if he can do it. Lenny? It, it's, I'm, I'm going to be, again, very interested to see how they play that. I don't know if they, you know, if they bring him out trying to guard the perimeter or if – because I think if you, if you do too much of that, you've you got to play to your strengths. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to, to have those guys – uh, you know, closer to the basket, the they could mm -hmm. they could potentially get exploited mm -hmm. if you try to you try to do those kind of things. Just like you want to make teams have to to you know maybe play a bigger lineup than what they're used to playing. They have to defend you. I don't think you necessarily want to give into what it is that they're going to do because because that's the thing. If if teams are trying to match up to you, then they're going to have to put bigger lineups out there. So maybe you can be a little more conventional and and, and switch less in terms of what you're doing defensively. Okay. Um, I want to switch to UNO, but I, I've got to ask this final question. Uh, and I've kind of asked it before, but I want to get a definitive answer. Pelicans make the playoffs this year? A week ago, I say no. Now I say yes. I say yes as well. And, um, well, once they get in against Golden State, when you look at, the, again, the strengths of an inside game against a team that likes, doesn't like to play a uh, physical ball, uh, do they have a chance? Do they have a chance to, not, not to win the series, but to be competitive? Absolutely, Eric. Absolutely. As what I mentioned earlier, they bring just the opposite of what Golden State brings. They can take it inside the paint and dominate. As for the Golden State Warriors live out on the outside, they have a bad shooting night or two. You're not going to have too many bad nights on the inside of the paint just because of how close you are, because of how big the size we can put out there. If Golden State Warriors, like I said, have a bad night or two, they can conceivably steal at least one game right. in a series. Yeah, they I, almost stole one the last time. They did, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I don't see this going past... Six, if that's the case, if we're, you know, we're getting way, way ahead, way ahead of things five, here. Yeah. But five more likely, six possible. Right. All right, UNO basketball, 16-9, and 11-3 and three in the conference. Uh, they got uh, four games left in the regular season. They, they, quite frankly, could reach 20 wins in the regular season. Stephen F. Austin's in town. Uh, next, they lost to them in Texas. You follow UNO closely. Talk about this year's basketball team. Uh, well, let's first of all say this. Since Katrina, this is the biggest week 
of UNO athletics since. Period. No discussion. The win over LSU in baseball Tuesday night with a, with a packed house out there. And now they're playing their biggest home game in probably 20 years against Stephen F. Austin uh, Thursday night uh, with the conference lead on the line. They're one game up. You win the game. You're two up with three to play. It's basically in your hands at that point. But uh, Mark Schlesinger should be the coach of the year in the Southland Agreed. Conference. No doubt about it. That it's, it's a terrific story what he's been able to do. And he's got a, he's got a great group of guys who play very well together, who like each other. And, you know, kudos to what they've been able to do. And it's, it's a huge, huge game Thursday night on the lakefront. Everybody's talking about going to check out Pelicans Rockets. Mm-hmm. Like you got 25 games left of the Pelicans, okay? you got four regular season games left with UNO and a chance to win a championship, basically, on Thursday night. Yeah, and, and, and again, overcome Stephen F. Austin, who has been pretty good in the Southland Conference, oh. and, of course, losing to them in Texas, uh, which kind of, you know, when, when UNO was on a little bit of a roll here, maybe people kind of step back and say, well, maybe they're not as good as we thought they were. This is, this is a, a game that they can kind of avenge that as well. No doubt about it. That, that simple. Look, Stephen F. Austin, the last three years, was 53-1 and in the Southland. Uh, now it's, you know, UNO in front right now, 11-3. and three. Stephen F. is 10-4. and four. So it, this is, uh, you know, this is basically your championship game. And it might be these two teams in a couple of weeks playing for the automatic NCAA. Right. And the thing to remember is that, look, even if they don't, the, look, you want to hang that banner up there. You want to win yes. that championship. But at the end of the day, you want to finish in the top two because of the way the Southland bracket mm-hmm. is set up. you got to buy all the way to the semifinals, and you only got to win two games to get to the NCAA. And, and, of course, that would be huge considering – College basketball in Louisiana, how down it is right now uh, to have the University of New Orleans uh, represent the state uh, in, in, in the big dance. But, but big, as you mentioned, big night for UNO, UNO baseball. I mean, a signature win for, for Blake Dean, 11-8 over LSU. A lot of people went out to, to UNO last night to, uh, to Mace, uh, the Macy Field uh, to see the Tigers, okay, because, you know, limited chance to see them. And they, and they got a show for the privateers. They, they did, and look, ideally – you know, they play 25 more home games this year. Hopefully some people saw a really good product out there, and they will come back and see them this year. They've done some, look, that, the, the new ball, first NBC ballpark at Mastery Field, it is really nice and a terrific place to watch a game as well. Uh, thanks so much, guys. I'll tell you what, great show. I'm looking forward to, uh, again, the last 25 games of the Pelicans, hoping that UNO uh, can, can stay on track and uh, have a chance to win a, a championship and maybe get into the big dance. And, uh, you know, again, it's no longer – uh, people looking at uh, the possibility of football around here anymore. People are now, are now uh, a little bit focused on, on basketball, which wasn't happening last week this time. Uh, there's no way in the world. So uh, hopefully good things will happen for the Pelicans going forward. Uh, special, special thanks to uh, Ali Gassell of The Bird Rights and Lenny Van Gilder of SportsNall.com. Don't forget there's a rebroadcast of this program each and every Friday night right here on WLAE. That is at 10 o'clock. And, of course, on Pelican Sports Television, that is 9 o'clock every Friday night. That's statewide. You catch me on the radio, 990 AM WGSO. That's 11 AM until 1 PM weekdays. Also on the TuneIn Radio app, which is a free download uh, for your smartphone or at ericasher.com where you can listen live and download the podcast. Also, uh, remember, uh, you can uh, check out uh, uh, the uh, sportsnoel.com and the bird rights uh, for some great uh, updated uh, w- w- stuff on the Pelicans and, of course, on local sports. I also want to thank the WLE production staff, including Ron Yeager, Jim Dotson, my d- uh, director, William Hill, also uh, the rest of the staff as well. My name is Eric Asher. Have a wonderful Mardi Gras season. See you right back here next Thursday night for another edition of Inside New Orleans Sports. New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is the first place award winner of the 2015 New Orleans Press Club's Excellence in Journalism Award for the category of Best TV Sports Show.